I want to talk to you about God's plan of salvation for the human race. The Bible says all have sinned and need salvation. Now, some people do not believe this. They feel that they can do good things and get to heaven by that way. But Jesus says, I am the door to heaven and that no man can get to God through any other way but through me. Why have we sinned? Why are we sinners? It is because of a four parents sinned against God. And so, sin fell upon the human race. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we are told, By grace are ye saved, through faith. What does grace mean? Grace means that God's love for us, God has made provision for our salvation by sending Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. He suffered and was buried and rose again so that we might have justification. Now this is a big word, but what does it mean? It means that when our sins are blotted out, God looks upon us as though we had never ever sinned. But some people still do not believe this. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And from the heart comes all evil. Therefore, we realize that all have sinned. The wages of sin is death, says Romans 6, 23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now a gift is something we do not pay for. It is offered to us and we receive it. And this is what God's salvation means. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but by his mercy has he saved us. Now when we realize that there is nothing we can do to get God's salvation, then we confess our sins, any known sins that we have done. We ask God to forgive us to accept Jesus Christ as his only son and the way to heaven. And when we do this, we accept this by faith. What does faith mean? Faith means that we have not seen God, but we accept him and trust him for what he's worth. And then we become justified and we become righteous before God. Because by the mouth confession is made and When we receive him, we must tell others what good things the Lord has done for us. But you might ask the question, how do I know that I'm saved and that I wouldn't sin anymore? The Bible says so, that when we are saved, we become a child of God and we receive eternal life. In 1 John 3, 1, It reads, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we might be called the sons of God. Therefore, when we receive him and confess him, we become children of God and we are fit for heaven. Some Christians find it difficult in living for Jesus. And they're heard to say, I just can't have victory over certain things. I believe that the sin that besets us most before Christianity comes in, that's the sin that keeps attacking us and presenting itself always. And sometimes Satan prevails because he presents that thing before us all the time. And then we get bothered about it and say, I just can't have victory over this habit or that thing. But if we just commit that thing to the Lord, if we try to do anything about it, we are going to fail because we are trying in ourselves. But if we commit that thing to the Lord, he's going to take care of it. And we just find those things leaving us. When we accept Jesus Christ and we turn over everything to him, He would take care of those things. It is true that we have difficulties in life and some people are heard to say, before I was a Christian, I got along so well and now that I'm a Christian, I'm having so many trials. Well, Jesus said, he that comes after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So there are three things we must do. We must deny ourselves. And you know, the most 
difficult for we can have to put up within the Christian life itself. It is because we feel that we must just do what we please, we must give the answer, we must retaliate, we must victimize, and unforgiving spirit is a very terrible sin because the Bible says that if we have iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. So, what we should do, be on our knees always. We should have our devotions, if possible, early in the morning and prepare ourselves for the day. Because even Jesus was our pattern when he was down here. Sometimes he continued in prayer all night. Jesus was tempted and he never sinned. And why? Each time he said, it is written. He used the word of God to defy Satan. And this is what we should do as Christians. We should read the word of God, meditate upon it. And we will find certain things in the scriptures that we do not understand. But whatever we do not understand, the Spirit beareth witness that we are the sons of God. And if we commit our way unto the Lord, the Holy Spirit will be our guide. He's going to be our teacher. He will teach us how to react and how to live. And the people that we despised at one time and that we hated and that we couldn't get along with, we find ourselves loving them. But we can't do these things in ourselves. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, whatever it might be, how very little, how very big, just cast our burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain us. One man had two boys. One day, the last boy said to Papa, Papa, give me my share of money. The Papa think with the thing couple days. Then he gone in that old chest and he grabbed the boy's share of money and he gave it to him. When the boy gave all the money, he put it in the pocket, he grabbed the little Georgie bundle, and away he went, into one far, far country, one place he'd never been before. It didn't take him long to find a couple of friends. So after getting them friends, he take all the money, he start to gamble, drinking, and gun with all kind of women. He did all kind of bad things, any kind of bad things he could think about. One day, he looked in his pocket. One cent was left. He couldn't believe he eye. He started walking up and down the road. But he couldn't see one of them friends he had. Hungry started to kill him. Them boy in his belly started to growl. He was dead hungry. He looked. He peeped. He see one man over there. He hardly could have make it. But anyway, since that was the only thing to do, he had to do it. He'd been working his finger almost to the bone just to save himself from dying. One day, as he's there feeding them hog, he scratched his head. He started to think. He started to think back with home. All them people, Papa, got there working back home. And here he is, dead hungry, starving. How he could make it? I know what I can do. I can make up my mind. I might as well go back. Let me think what I can say now. Oh yeah, I know. Papa, I sin against you and God. I ain't good enough no more to be called your child. But anyway, I beg you, please let me be one of your servants. So he left the place and he started on the way back home. While he's one far away off walking back home, he papa went to the window. He looked. That looked like my child. He couldn't believe it. He went down to the door. He looked. Yeah, that got to be my child. He bustled that door as fast as his foot could carry him. The breeze even couldn't catch up with him. When he got a little close, he stretched out his hand. He grabbed his child. He hugged him. And he kissed him. My child, my child, this year 
Where you been all them years? Oh, just my child been fretting about. The child was short-winded. He couldn't talk. Yes, Papa. Desma. 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 The boy say, Papa, I sin against you and God. I ain't good enough to be called your child. The Papa didn't wait for nothing else. He said he's servant. Quick, bring the best robe and put it on my child. Bring a ring to put on his finger and some slipper on his foot. Kill the biggest cow you got in the back there. Let's have a big time. This machado was dead and now he's living again. He was lost and now he's found. Come, Hina, come. Let's have a big time. Listen, my friend. This story is told by Jesus to show how much he loves us. He wants us to come back to him. You may be like that boy in the story, but God still loves you. Although you go on your own way, although you even ain't thinking but him, he still loves you. When that boy come back to his father, his father take him back joyfully. Just so, the Lord Jesus' arms is open to receive us. This is why he died on the cross to save us from our sins. He bear all our sins. Anything you could think of on that cross just to bring us back to himself. Just as his father received his son, the Lord Jesus will take us back. If we turn from our wicked ways, he is right there. He will forgive us. He ain't thinking what we do. Don't care what kind of sin you do. The Lord Jesus is right there waiting to receive you, to save you. Only thing you gotta do be sorry for your sins and ask the Lord to save you. You don't gotta worry how you sound when you're praying. Only thing you gotta do is tell him, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I want you to save me. I want you to come into my life and change me. Won't you do it right now? Only believe him. He is willing and able to save you if you will ask him. The first thing the boy do was to catch his sense and make up his mind to go to the father to get things straightened up. After the boy went back home, he didn't want to go back into those old things anymore. So, my friend, the same thing will happen to you. If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you wouldn't want to go back in those old things anymore because you will have found a new life in Him. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. I've wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. I've tired of sin and straying, Lord. Now I'm coming home. I'll trust thy love, believe thy word. Lord, I'm coming home. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thy arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. 